So our next phase of the panel is a short period of time, and we have about 10 minutes left um, for group discussion and Q&A. And I'm wondering if any of our panel members have questions or observations for each other. What has made it the hardest so far for getting an interdisciplinary group up and running at UCSD? Um, what would you say was the biggest challenge you faced? Perhaps Kim, Chaitin? Are you ready to answer it? I can chew, I can think a little longer. Did my dean leave? No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, my, my biggest challenge is that it's, it's a bit of a foreign thing that somebody, for example, from School of Medicine would go and talk to somebody at SIO or social science or even engineering and, and, and doing that without any uh, financial support and a vision by an institution to support it is really challenging. So it's a one-man show where one is just kind of hammering at things and in many cases failing. So that's why I'm very excited that there is now this shift of, you know, going from the traditional NIH, NSF, which is we know how it gets kind of streamlined, uh, to something more innovative. And, and I, think, I think this is an opportunity to launch that, and, and I'm really more hopeful than ever before. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I came here 12 years ago to try and sort of do what we finally were able to do. And a lot of it was um, just thinking back. It was a, a, it was a couple of things. It was um, finding the right people um, that really worked together for the right reasons and really um, cared. And so just sort of sifting through and figuring people out in very different disciplines that you don't see every day took a while. Um, the other thing was that just historically, on the campus, I mean, getting part, get, there's a lot of collaboration, um, especially in the area of environmental, um, you know, between one and two and three investigators, but trying to really um, bridge between departments, um, going up and down the hill between scripts um, in, in chemistry, um, it seems a lot further than a mile sometimes, we've often commented, but it doesn't feel that way anymore. And um, I think there's just, for what, I, what I'm excited by, the change that has happened in the last year or so, is just the amount of um, discussion amongst the sort of you know, the faculty have always talked, but there's actually more discussion amongst um, how to build bridges between our leaders. And I think that um, is very refreshing. And I hope that what follows from that is that being a director, um, I think that the campus, you know, I, I sometimes was, um, you know, just pushing to, you know, why do you want to be a director of something this big? Because you have to give up a lot to do it. And so there has to be sort of an incentive to doing it. And so I'm hoping that's the direction that things are going so other people will want to take the lead of these big, important things to do for the campus. But being a leader, you do, you do give up a lot. So there has to be some, you know, um, incentive to doing that. And I think I'm hoping we're moving in that direction. So, um, so I wanted to say I've, I've been here now 17 years, um, and I, I'm a computer scientist. I actually used to work at IBM. I quit that job and came here because I was actually interested in doing collaborations with scientists and doing these interdisciplinary things. So, uh, from an SDSC perspective, I feel like that's actually what SDSC does. You know, SDSC is in the business of doing multidisciplinary collaborations, so that comes sort of naturally to us. That doesn't mean to say that it's easy to do. Um, it, it's, it's hard a lot of times you have to get the language right, you got to get the motivations right. You, you know, there, there are different people coming with different uh, purposes to this collaboration. And, and so um, it, it's just a generic thing, but I, I, but I think it's important. You know? So in a, in a way I would say uh, maybe, I, I, maybe I was ahead of the curve or maybe SDSC was ahead <laughs> of the curve and campus is catching up now. Uh, but, but actually, the other thing is that's interesting that I find over the 17 years is we started off as an as a SDSU or the supercomputer center that actually had a national focus. Most of our collaborations were with abroad, uh, with uh, uh, folks at other universities. In fact, I did a project that had like 12 different uh, universities, PIs from 12 different universities, and that was a big mm -hmm. effort. And just just choose up all your time. Mm -hmm. And actually now we are beginning to focus more on campus, which is very exciting because then we can work with people who are right here. David, did you have something to add? Um, 
I wanted to echo what other people have been saying, but to get on to the idea of you know learning to speak different languages in order to have successful collaborations. And I think a big part of that is um, interdisciplinary education, both at undergraduate and graduate mm -hmm. levels. So I think I'm a CMBC graduate, and I think that definitely put me in a good position to be able to do these sorts of collaborations. And I think that sort of training is critical if we want people to be able to think across the mm -hmm. disciplines. So mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's an important component. Actually, I'd like to jump in and strongly second that mm -hmm. idea. And, um, I mean, at SDSA, we've used the term cross-training, right? So this is a notion that scientists are trained in informatics. So you have geoinformatics, bioinformatics, eco-informatics. Eco you have informatics in all of these areas. I think there also needs to be more of uh, what in computer science you might call applied computer science, but computer scientists working with applications. A and I understand that the courses, uh, I mean, it's hard to change the actual curriculum because they're already so full of required things. But maybe we can find projects at undergraduate level or graduate level. And increasingly, CS department has, has projects in the master's level. So we, we are now finding more students coming through SDSC to do projects. So I think these kind of mechanisms that allow students to go across campus would be useful. Yeah. Tying into that, um, the, dean, the new dean of the engineering school recently um, put out the challenge of, and I'm not in the engineering school, but I listened to this, put out the challenge of every engineering student studying here having a field experience, an intern experience. And that's something that we at UCSD can do with our undergraduates in a powerful way. Because our undergrads are absolutely excellent, and our faculty to student ratios are not terrible. And the, the undergrads are really keen. Mm -hmm. So I was glad to see all four of the examples here have included undergraduate. And then the other area that we have that we can do creatively is exactly the kind of masters you've had. And you know, being able to do master's degrees that combine different strengths. So mm -hmm. I think we'll mm -hmm. be seeing more and more of that, because that will be some of the fuel. And then masters that combine with the undergraduate where a student can do a three plus two or a four plus one can be a, a wonderful way to launch students into this next, next century. Other questions? I was wondering if I could ask for some elaboration on a couple of comments that were made. Um, for example, uh, there was a uh, uh, the point was made that it's important to be able to talk across campus, uh, to engage people from other departments. And I'm wondering if you could envision venues that might, uh, activities that we might be able to promote on campus that could foster that, uh, lower that barrier, um, make it easy, build these uh, collaborative opportunities. What might you suggest? And this is open. I, I'm asking this question not just of the panelists, but frankly, the whole audience might have some uh, suggestions as well. Uh, there's a quick, and maybe it's an easy one, but uh, we were talking earlier before the meeting started about, you know, several years ago, SDSC used to run these things called CSSS, Computational Science Seminar Series. And it was actually engaging folks on campus who were into computational stuff. I, I think might be a good time to start a DSSS, which is a data science seminar series. Uh, certainly computational issues uh, obviously involve the particular problem that you're looking at, but with data it's even more so that you really have to understand the domain from which the data is coming. So it's, in a way it's an even more collaborative effort that you need when you're talking about data science as opposed to say computational science. Uh, and I think it'd be great to have a forum where the scientists and us computer types, uh, you know, would, would be able to interact. Um, I, I think two ideas. Uh, one is making some kind of a student competition for undergraduate, graduate level, where uh, it's high profile, attended by the chancellor and the deans to give prizes, monetary, probably if students would like more, where the best interdisciplinary project by a student at H, H level. And, and the other idea is that the Office for Research Affairs would dig into these very silver lining 
funding opportunities that do cross, which they're very rare and very difficult to find. And then they know who are the people and say, look, there's this funding opportunity that crosses, and, and I think that's... Um, I just had one idea, and I think um, if we could have a UCSD-wide seminar series, it's hard to collaborate with people if you don't know what they do. And I think the chance to really learn what our colleagues around campus are doing is, is relatively limited. Scripps um, uh, uh, recently um, initiated a, a Scripps-wide seminar series, and I think that's been really useful. And I think if we could scale that up to the entire campus, a lot of good things could come from that. Can I, can I add to that? I, I think that's a great idea. The only thing is is that we, go, we already go to so many seminars, and so not to complain, but I think what would be really helpful is if it, it was available on the web that you can watch it when you want to, because then I think I would be able to benefit instead of watching another Downton Abbey or something, I might watch a seminar. <laughs> maybe not, but maybe not. In addition, <laughs> exactly. I think we need to work on ways to foster leadership for these programs and actually reward people who are willing to put their time into them, maybe with some months of salary or summer salary or, um, and, or to help fund their graduate students. But you know, I, it's, it's hugely time consuming and often it, the rewards um, aren't there in the more traditional sense, so that would help. I just think this is such, such a great question. What's so, becoming so clear is that the technological prowess that we have, becoming more conscious of what's going on in the planet and ecosystems, crystal clear. And yet, Kim, you know, as you say, as you, as you continue doing this work, it's not going to be better measurements and so forth. That helps, of course, but linking that to action. So we're very strong as a campus globally, right, in doing this kind of work. One possibility for thinking this through, how to, how to meet the engagement thing, what about regional engagement? What about figuring out a couple of areas, for instance, water, where we, as the campus, lays down some trusted pathways to the right kinds of institutions regionally, like, for instance, the Regional Water Quality Control Board, that would have the need for the kinds of research that we're doing and make it easier to do that kind of engagement. That would bring us, I think, light years forward in getting access to the most amazing research frontier opportunities right here. And, and just because they're local doesn't mean it's global. Uh, so we've done some work up in the border region uh, regionalizing uh, global climate change modeling, which suggests that dust vectors are going to become increasingly important. So there you go. So that's just a thought. Um, um, I have two suggestions. Um, one is a, just a small-scale grassroots kind of sub suggestion, and one is a, a bigger picture suggestion. Uh, small-scale, um, I could see how just a little bit of money to have a, a shared student, and the only rule is you have to have someone from another department. You do whatever you want, uh, get a student, and talk someone else into, into working with that student to get just a small uh, collaborative thing going, because um, uh, it allows people to focus in on something practical that could turn into a proposal. Um, from the large scale, I think what would help is actually to know the rules of the game here, um, because uh, it was explained that the purpose today is to hone these ideas, and I don't know if anyone, maybe other people have a better understanding than I do about um, how these different projects and directions have been established, but. I didn't vote. I, I can see now the email I missed where I was supposed to vote, and I look at the vote, and there are four votes, and sometimes there's the number of votes for a project, number of authors. So I, I kind of would like to, I think that it's, it's fair for us when we're talking about ways to move forward is that we know the rules of the game, and, and we write a, a proposal to NSF, we know what the rules are. And here we're talking about um, this large, initiative, the direction that the university is going, but we don't really know the rules in which we can operate and establish collaborations. So I appreciate that comment. Um, 
one example of how to think about it and how to structure thinking is co-authorship on a joint collaborative paper. In bioinformatics, the most important papers are the ones that have a biological discovery. So the bioinformatics always goes in the middle. <laughs> and I've always wished that we could have circular lists of authors <laughs> where there is no beginning and no end, <laughs> and at least co corresponding authors. Yeah, but these are the practical kind of mechanisms that can help with these sorts of things. Uh, thanks. This has all been a really exciting um, discussion. And I'm sitting amongst some graduate students from Scripps and from political science. And um, I just wanted to make everyone here aware that from the graduate student level, there's been um, a great initiative in the past year to start an interdisciplinary group that kind of rides on the coattails of the SIO IGERT program and the Critical Ecologies Research Forum um, that was on upper campus. And so we've created a new group in the past year called the Interdisciplinary Forum on Environmental Change um, with the ultimate goal of establ establishing some graduate-led um, uh, interdisciplinary research projects and we've had a very successful run so far and we're looking for more um, faculty support and so it's really exciting to hear about everybody mentioning um, you know undergraduate graduate postdoc level uh, support for interdisciplinary work and so um, if you're interested you can find us but thank you we're really excited All right, that concludes this panel. We started five minutes late and we've ended five minutes late. Thank you. <laughs>